we go ahead and start the meeting. Okay. I'm going to read the announcement, the usual announcement here. Pursuant to Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Join the Zoom meeting at the link posted in the agenda and notice and so on. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, <coughs> excuse me, for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Westboro Public Library's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after this meeting. And I should note that um, this meeting will be recorded. And in fact, it's being recorded now. So, um, okay. Uh, I guess, so I will call the meeting to order. It is now 3.35. I apologize for getting on late. Um, public forum, do we have any members of the public here who wish to speak? I'm not hearing anyone, so let's go on to discuss the special town meeting presentation. Uh, excuse me, Ed. Is it, appropriate, is it appropriate that those in attendance um, say who they are? Uh, yeah, we can certainly go around that. Um, and let's just do everybody. I, some, some people have names up and some are only phone numbers, but let's get everybody. Uh, Maureen, we'll start with you because you're the first on the screen. Maureen Amiot, Library Director. I'm Ed Baldwin. I'm the Chair of the Building Committee. Al, you're next on my screen. Al Gordon, Building Committee. Uh, LPA. Eric, Eric Moore and Christina Baselman. And I believe Katie Crockett is on my phone as well. I see something labeled Katie's iPhone. Bill? Uh, Bill Lenane, Trustee and Building Committee. Bob? Bob uh, Petrosali, Building Committee Vice Chair. Walter? Uh, Walter Leslie, Building Committee. Uh, Katie's iPhone. Katie's iPhone. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Mary, I see you're on. I'm here. Mary Johnston, Chair of the Library of Trustees and Building Committee. Uh, Ryan? Hi, Ryan. You Pasquale Fontaine Bros. Uh, CM at risk project manager. Great. Uh, John, I know you're driving now, so don't interrupt. Just don't interrupt. It's okay. No, it's okay. John Lemieux from Vertex, owner's project manager. So I see a phone number ending in 5651. Jim Holmes, library trustee. Hey, Jim. Uh, and another I, phone I number ending in 4928. Hi, Ed. Brian Forrest from Vertex Companies, OPM. Hey, Brian. Okay. So uh, that's everybody, I believe. So that's, um, uh, so that means no members of the public are here at the, at the moment. Uh, if any should come in, we'll ask them to introduce themselves and see if they have anything to say. Um, so I, you probably all know that um, the petition drive collected 555 signatures, and which is an, an impressive job, and is, I guess, in the town clerk's hands right now to be verified. Um, I don't know the detail status. Maureen is nodding. So Yes, okay, so it looks uh, she has the um, signed petition form. So uh, later this week, they'll start verifying the signatures to make sure that they are um, Westboro registered voters. And then uh, simultaneously, the um, assistant town manager plans to post a select board meeting for sometime early next week. And uh, the select board will uh, choose the time and location of the meeting at that select board meeting. The select board meeting will choose the time and location of the town meeting. Special the town special meeting. town meeting, yes. Okay. Could you keep us posted on the um, timing for that, that select board meeting? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's move on to the special town meeting presentation, which looks like it is going to happen given the results of that petition drive. I don't have slides to share with you this week. I'm sorry. I was hoping to have something ready that we could review. Um, unfortunately, the library budget is due today also. And they didn't realize that at the time <laughs> when we were discussing this last week. So 
I uh, had to get the budget done. I'm sorry. I fully endorse you working on the budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a. There's urgent and there's important. That one's both. So yes. However, I do have um, ready to go for you um, probably after this meeting before the end of the day a draft of the FAQ that I'm still working on. There's I really did get a lot of information from committee members, um, in particular from Lee and from uh, Pete. And I've been trying to work all of those into, I was hoping for a one page front and back document. Um, it turns out there's more information than can fit on the front and back of one sheet. So it might be two sheets, but I'm, I may need all of your help just um, weighing in. I'll probably upload it as a Google Doc so we can work on it um, together. You can make edits, um, add, subtract, et cetera. So uh, that'll be posted before I leave the library tonight. Um, I should ask, if we're working collaboratively on a Google Doc, does that count as debate for the purposes of the Open Town Meeting Law? Oh, good question. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, say again, Mary? I have no idea on that one. Yeah, um, it, it seems to me. We, I think what want... you'd have to, yeah, what you'd have to do is people can all read it there, but send their comments individually to just Maureen. Yeah, That's, okay. Yeah, okay. And then we can sort of collate them and consider them at at our next meeting. Okay. Um, cool. Do, do any of you um, think you'll have a problem using the, the Google Sheets or if, thing and editing if, work? If we do it this way, I'll just send it out in Word because that'll oh, that be works. easier. Yeah. Okay. Then we can merge and, everything. And just later remind on. people not to reply all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. I, w I was going to suggest doing doing that, and I hadn't even thought of the town, the open town meeting law aspects until just now. Yeah, I'm glad um, you thought of that. Sorry, just, I gotta tell this guy I can't talk right now. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, given that, does anyone have other suggestions or um, information or anything else that we need to discuss with regards to the presentation? I just had a question and just to clarify, you know, we discussed you know, going back and perhaps going to the uh, library commission to see if we could alter the oh, thank uh, you. Yes. the plan somewhat. So when we go back to town meeting, but do we agree on that? I mean, in hindsight, I know some of us wanted or thought that we wouldn't go back to town meeting unless there was a significant change. But considering now that it's a a voter petition so initiative going back by the by the townspeople, then we're going back with just the original presentation that we did on November eighteenth. I'm excuse me, October 18th. Uh, so we're not altering anything, right? When we're going back to the special town meeting now, it's going to be as presented last month. I think the intent was to go, we, we can make changes. I don't know of anything that says we have to do the exact same um, presentation. Well, I don't mean so, the exact same presentation, but we're not going to go back and have a significant change in scope and budget like we Oh, thought. no, no, no. The presentation will change, but the project as I understand it, and I didn't read the petition in detail, the um, it's calling for a town meeting about specific articles, and the text of the articles is in that petition. So, so that's what the meeting will be about. Um, we do need to decide whether we want to, on the floor, make a you know, change the article that we present and turn, change the amount on that article, or uh, what we'll think if someone makes an amendment to that effect. So I see two two hands up. Uh, Maureen, why don't you go first? Thanks. Um, so a couple things. First, if we wanted to propose a different number, we wouldn't make a motion on the floor. We would just change change the motion so that um, the motion can be different from what is written in the warrant, and what's on the petition is what will be written in the warrant. So we could the the motion could could be for a different amount. However, um, we had a meeting. One of the one of my to do's after the meeting was to set up a meeting with um, MBLC to find out if we could remove the you know things like the 
covered porch and the outdoor space to to achieve cost savings and their their take on it was that the small amount that we would gain from doing that kind of kind of two things one that it and I agree with this um, and this may be my words not theirs that um, it really takes away from the unique features of this building um, but also mm -hmm. that it was not of a meaningful enough size to make it um, something that they would recommend you know, they just don't recommend that we do that um, and they also felt that there's no amount that we could take off of this project that's going to satisfy or change anyone's mind that is in opposition to it. Um, probably even if we went back to the, if we were able to go back to the original number, it still wouldn't satisfy some of the opponents of this project. So um, their recommendation was for us not to do that and just go forward with it um, as presented at the October 17th town meeting. Um, Eric or John, um, it, did I miss anything? Do you guys, or Christina, do you want to add anything? Um, I, I was not there, but the step that, from what I've, what I've heard from Christina and Katie, that, that is accurate, uh, Maureen. If you want to add anything, Christina. Yeah, and just to basically uh, piggyback on what you said, we had told them that this reduction in in size, you know, added up to that four hundred thousand um, dollar, you know, range cost range, and they just said like that amount of money saved versus what the pro the program space that you would lose, they didn't feel was a good balance. So um, they did say, um, well, technically they can't legally tell us, I think, well, to to keep those in for the grant purposes that they would highly recommend that we continue with the building exactly as it was before because like Maureen said like we're not going to satisfy the naysayers by taking out these nice program spaces for that small amount of money and because they were not in the program spaces in the building program that um yeah I'll leave it I'll leave it there Walter <laughs> Oh, sorry, go ahead, Eric. Well, the only thing I would add, I, 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 and I'm not sure I heard it, was, was some potential. If you do change it, there there was some potential for some pushback or, or negativity from even pro pro library um, citizens. Uh, that in in that you know they they may have felt that those were really desirable features you know that porch and that third floor thing and then to have it pulled pulled away and and at the last minute on the on the on the floor however um, it comes across there is a potential for some people to feel that that you know maybe they had the rug pulled out from under and uh, could be perceived in a negative way so I, and I could see that. That happening. I mean, those are some of the, I think, desirable features of the uh, of the design. Uh, well, that was the only thing. I... Walter. Yeah, um, I'm less interested in uh, uh, their opinion of how we would get it passed, such as that last example. Um, it it is more a question. If we, if our amount, if we were able to reduce the amount at all, would that still meet the grant and not whether they think we would lose 32 voters because they might have loved the porch. So I'm a little wondering um, where we, they were, they, were, they weren't willing to say uh, that you could have that reduction and still have the grant or not, because it would have been better for them to say, no, we wouldn't pass it then and not leave it as a gray area and um, leaves us in a quandary that uh, if if a motion is made and passed or the, the, because in a public meeting, we discussed taking potentially a million and a half off this. If, um someone were to make that motion or that's the motion that passed now i don't feel like we understand whether they would 
uh, still give us the grant money from what I heard so far. So I'm wondering if there's more to this. I'll second that question, Walter. I, I agree that if we didn't get a hard answer for that, we do need we do need it. I, I think Maureen started to touch on that. I, I feel like we did get an answer on that front. Maureen, did you want to take that? Um, go ahead. Um, go ahead, Christina. What I heard is that those two spaces were not technically in the program when we applied for the grant. Is that what you heard? Yes. The outdoor porch and the children's outdoor space. They're recommended by the NPLC, but they don't have any technical grounds to to rescind the grant based on removing removing those two two spaces, like so they're not necessarily protected. Okay. Is that what you heard, Maureen? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um. So I'll put you. Go ahead. Oh, me? oh, yeah, sure. I just wanted to, the reason I'm raising my hand is I agree with Maureen and, and uh, Eric and Christina. Um, I know last week I went along with a comment that was made that if the petition aside, that if we were to go back, we should have a significant change. But now that the petition is, is set, I, and uh, I'm thinking that we might be, if we went back to this meeting and had a motion to change the scope significantly or partially or whatever, we would be undercutting the petitioner's intent and changing the scope that 550 people signed on to a document thinking that the project reacts. If we came back and said, oh no, we, we, we're sad, we, we just as soon go with something else. I don't think that would be fair. And I was gonna use the words, uh, pulling the rug from underneath everybody. And that's what Eric had mentioned. So I'm just gonna say undercutting. So. I kind of agree with Maureen and the others that it, it's the full Monty. It's what we said we wanted. And then the petitioners want 550 people are bringing it back. They signed on to this in good faith. And I think that's what you go with. Bill. Yeah, would, would it be appropriate to say each one of these things are being value engineering, engineered all the way along? I mean, uh, Magano did say we can do this, we can do that with certain areas. So uh, we don't have to shut it down, but I agree with the way Bob said, we don't want to pull the rug out from what the people want, but certainly we are value engineering all of these things as we go forward. And we've said that. So. Yeah, great point, Bill. That's great, that is great. We are value engineering, but we're not just squeeze out the inefficiencies and save some money, but we're not changing the program or the scope. Right. Okay. I will say I, I was sort of leaning toward trying to reduce the cost last week, but after having heard all the arguments we here, I, I changed my mind as well. Um, it sounds to me like uh, it, there's two parts to this. One is um, I think we should we should keep the amendment as it's written in the petition for the reasons Bob gave, and because that's you know it, it's sort of simpler that way. But in case somebody does offer an amendment to uh, reduce the price we're gonna pay by one and a half million dollars, and you know, people have done that for school board hearings and things, we want to, it's important to be able to say, yes, this is, we, this will not cost us the grant or not. We need to be accurate about whatever response we make to it. Uh, and so I think that getting that answer from, uh, from the MBLC will, May, will likely be important in the meeting one way or the other because i'd rather i'd rather get it you know if, the, if such an amendment passes and then the actually let me take a step sideways if there is if such an amendment happened and pass if such an amendment passed that would then become the new article is that correct and we would then vote for the whole article with the reduced cost okay so if that amendment passed we would be we would be looking at the the reduced this somewhat reduced project. Okay. I believe the amendment only has to, of the motion only has to pass by a uh, majority. Okay. Whereas the article has to pass article by Because yeah, there's no loan for the amendment, but there is a loan. Yeah, there, I think so. For the, okay. That yeah. makes sense. And we don't, we don't have, um, just to avoid surprises, that may be a question to ask um, uh, John Arnold at some point. But uh, I think you're correct. Okay. Um, let's see. Other 
other things. Um, did you, uh, Bill, go ahead. Yeah, just it's in probably what you're going to say, other things. Uh, Maureen, I, I got a laundry list of things from one person from a small group, but I can answer all of them just in generalities because we've discussed it and it'll be included. And if there's anything outstanding, I'll include it in the document you send out. Uh, I don't see anything new. The only new one I see is that fundraising, <clears throat> um, and I can summarize it in that we should ask the fundraising committee to state what their goal is, and they can read it verbatim from what they've had and say that what the purposes are have been for not going out uh, and asking for money ahead of time, but they may be able to say, and I say may, that they have verbal commitments uh, with no value or some value, uh, but we, at least some kind of a statement that gives comfort to the community that that's an active group. So I'll leave that up to you uh, with Maureen and I would suggest that it's Maureen and um, Jim Ball uh, so that you get both opinions, they're co-leaders and not just from one. I'm not saying one is different than the other, but let's get a summary of it so that what is stated there. Um, the other follow-up statement, Ed, is that um, I had said I'd reach out to Fred Leonardo. I haven't done that. He's working this evening. I will. And all I'm asking him to do is to make a statement like he did regarding the, um, help me, the school on East, on East Main Street, the Hastings School that says what the uh, FDA, re no, the disabilities requirements are should we go to another thing? Just make a statement. I'm not asking to answer any questions that would be up to the committee and the, our team, okay? And I'm quite sure that he will make that statement. He did at the, um, for the school department, and I don't know why he would, he's, he's in charge of that piece of thing here in town. Thank you. Well, could you, when you have that discussion, um, could you also ask if there's any other code changes that might apply? Like we've heard mention of the fire code and structural changes, and I, I don't know what other things might come into it. Yes. Yes, I will. Thank you. Because that, that's, um, I think the ADA is going to be a big chunk of it, but not the, not the only chunk. Yeah, the, I would approach them in the same way from a construction standpoint of view. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, I uh, sat in on the, let's see, Massachusetts Public Library Building Program um, public forum last week and to find out what was, what, what's coming down the pike, both in, ter in terms of what our options might be in future years. And um, I, I, I think you all saw my emailed summary, uh, but it's, they are streamlining the program, but even with the streamlined program, it's going to be um even with a streamlined loan program and if we were to reapply for a grant it would be i forget what the number was six to eight years before we had a completed library in any case so and as marina said we need a lot of repairs before that would happen so i don't think that's a viable option and uh we can prepare some information on that if the question comes up at town meeting Um, okay. Uh, anything else? Any questions for me about that? Ma Maureen, did you, have you attended one of those public hearings? Yeah. I did. I, did. I, I attended one of the, the Zoom ones too. And, yeah. um, so the, their plan is to, um, announce a new grant round in, the first after the first of the year sometime in the first couple of months of 2023 um the process for applying will be totally different and all of this is dependent on um the outcome of the changes to the legislation so um we don't know how quickly that's going to happen so i should say that but uh if it all goes according to plan they'll announce a new grant round um the letters of intent would be due in 2024 and if i have the timeline right 
And then um, the towns, the libraries that are invited into the grant round this time will be funded for planning and design and for construction. So there won't be two separate applications. It should be easier for municipalities to plan ahead as far as capital spending, um, but they will be awarding fewer and they will only be keeping a small waiting list um, so that there won't ever be a five-year, six-year, seven-year wait for construction funds ever again. And um, their only reason, someone asked at my session, like, why do you have to have a waiting list anyway? Why don't you just award them mm -hmm. and move forward? And their uh, reasoning was that in case a town defeats their project, they will still be able to spend the money that they've been given for library construction they'll have other municipalities kind of waiting in the wings. So um, it sounds like it will only be a couple of projects that will be waitlisted and those will start maybe a year later. So when all is said and done, they're looking at like um, cons construction and completion of new buildings, probably like um, 27 or 28 at this point. Christina, you were at the session I went to. Do I have the, that timeline right? Because I don't have my notes in front of me. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking at, at it too. In oh, mine, okay. yeah, they said um, construction would start in summer or fall 2027. 20, so that would be ending in 28 or 29. So quite yeah. a while up. Yeah. And, that, and then the next grant round would start four years after they announced this one. So it's yeah, it's not the key for me is that no guarantee of getting in and not an instant process anyway. So right. Maureen, I would assume that we'd still we wouldn't be starting from square one, but certainly we'd have to expend time and efforts for uh, the panel to go back and look at what the new criteria is and see if it fits. So that's gonna take time for us to do an expenditure. So. We pretty much would be starting from square one, Bill, because we wouldn't be able to take the current plan and just plop it into their new program. Okay. It would it would be right. starting over. Okay. We'd have to do a new needs assessment because the one we have now is almost 10 years old, maybe completely 10 years old. Um, yeah. So it's mis. I, I, I'm glad I asked because it's misleading to say uh, construction monies, you know, be available that kind of that quick. I mean, they can say that, but it takes time for everybody to put it. So we don't want to tell the public, mislead them, and say, hey, you know, we could get monies to do this and start construction in 2027. But we don't know that. So. We we don't know that. If we were get it, get in on this grant round, we would. It, it, we would have to do that. That's their schedule, and I suspect they're not. We'd have to you know, do our. We'd have to start from scratch and do all of the homework um, and the design grants and stuff right away. Um, and it would come out in 2027. We start construction 27. But uh, but like Marine said, there's no guarantee we would get a grant. Right. Um, okay. So, John, you've got your hand up. Yes, and just a. I'm sorry, I dropped off there for a second. I will just for the committee, because I know it was a question. Um, if by some chance um, the, the you know, citizens petition were unsuccessful, um, the town, if, if the committee were, were, made, were happy with the performance of LPA and Vertex, um, Shab Khan said that, you, you know, that we could continue um, in a new project because of the way the RFPs were written. However, we could not continue with Fontaine because they were hired for a very, very specific scope. So if we were to go see them at risk with a new project, we would have to start over. Okay, thank you. It looks like, as, as I think you know, that we had 555 signatures on that petition. So they'd have to be, um, 355 of them would have to be invalid for it not to not to meet the criteria 
I think that's pretty unlikely. So assuming the town meeting, the, it's, I think there will be another special town meeting. If that votes for us, votes the project in, then we, we should be going with the team we have. So I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. I'll catch up. Was there anything that you needed a vote on that I wasn't here for? Not yet. Okay. Lee, did you get the discussion about um, about that possibly uh, amending the article on the floor? I'm not using the right terminology. Make, making the article for a lower cost project? No, I didn't hear that. Um, uh, the summary is we decided to uh, have the article, leave the article at the existing cost, um, but we do have an answer from the MBLC. If someone were to make an amendment from the floor to use a reduced cost, we can, uh, we know that the, the programming, program areas that we talked about removing to save that million to million and a half dollars, mm -hmm. uh, would not invalidate the grant. They're not part of the original proposal. Well, that's good to know. That's great. So, yeah. yeah. So we have an option. Yeah, I, I think that we should start out with our original because mm -hmm. it's a beautiful plan. And if, if it looks like that's something that would make a huge difference, it's good to know we have that option. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to start out with that, though, because yeah. I think there's a good reason why we have the plan we have. No apologies about the plan we have. Anyway, thank okay. you for catching me up. You're very welcome. Okay, any other comments? Questions? Um, so right now I believe the action items, uh, I'm sorry, Eric has a hand up. Go ahead, Eric. And I just wanted to offer our, our help in terms of uh, graphics for the, for the presentation, the special town meeting presentation, if there's anything we can do. Um, to help things uh, look look right, and, and uh, we'll, we can work with uh, Maureen in that in that regard. Be happy to, to do that. Great. Thank, Thank you. you, Walter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, regarding the presentation and graphics you just discussed, I did get an interesting comment from somebody that felt um, that maybe because of the way we swing around the building and where it looks like um, was that we should have at least one graphic that shows it from the aerial view um, because people were getting the sense that it was like an overstuffed Oreo or something. It, it was too close you know to the sides and mm. in all directions and i, I think uh, that those 3d views kind of makes it look a little more like that than maybe it is but um mm -hmm. adding one view from the top anyway this person had that suggestion and and, and i guess because i've seen so many pictures and images that it's hard for me to judge those things because <laughs> we see a lot of, a lot more than they did Lee, you've got your hand up. Um, yeah, also to add on to what he was saying, I agree with that. Um, one, I had asked if the architects could put a rendering with the benches still in front, because some, you know, a lot of people said we love sitting in the front and it looks like you've completely destroyed that area. When I think there actually is room still for two benches on each side of the walkway. And I think we should have that in there if they can do that. But I was wondering, Obviously, I missed some things. Are you, are we going over the frequently asked questions sheets, or is Maureen still working on that, or how how is that I'm, coming? Do I'm going to help. I'm going to send that out after the meeting, Lee. Yeah, Lee. The plan is she'll send copies of that out to everybody, um, and then we will mark it up in in Word or whatever works. Send it back to Maureen and yeah. have the collected comments for our next meeting. Well, I woke up in the middle of the night thinking what a daunting list of stuff between Pete and me. We'd send Maureen and I felt badly for her. Thought, Holy cow. But it, but it is important, you know, I think. And I have um, I'm still in contact with the two temples, the Hindu temple and the Sikh temple about trying to set up an informational meeting. 
with them, which I, I think we'll be able to do, you know, it, within the time frame we have. So that's ongoing conversations. So that's my update. Uh, it occurred to me, and I'm going to cut you off for a minute, Bob. As you read the um, the FAQs, think about things that we should make slides for in case those questions come up on the floor and we want to actually have, be able to put data on the screen to support what we're saying. Um, something to keep in mind, and we can put the slides together once we have them. Uh, Bob. Oh, sure. Um... I was talking, someone contacted me too about the, on the rendering about that front long, long ramp, the uh, handicap ramp, stating that that would kind of be visually unpleasing or ugly or take up too much away from the green space. And I had said that if we go through with this, I, I thought that we had said that we're going to eliminate that, maybe just put an elevator in so that you wouldn't have this long ramp because we were afraid that kids might be skateboarding on it. Or if it's in the winter, people might slip and fall on it and we'd would restore the front the front yard of the library. Did I misspeak on that? But I assumed that we were not going to have that long, long ramp. As far as I know, we have not made a decision about that. Um, okay. And there, but do we, do we need a discussion about that? Uh, I'm not sure if that was changed the project too much, but to you know, because of the, the kids hanging out and you know, icing ice on it and. I don't know. I don't know um, what other thing about that. Sort of like design details. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I think we do need to have a discussion on it, but we shouldn't try and have it before town meeting, okay. before the, the special town meeting. Um, just it, it's it's in the weeds, particularly if we don't mow that lawn. But um, uh, we, but it's definitely an issue that needs to be considered. We will we, we'll bring we bring that we will be bringing that up with the architects uh, just in case they had in case they missed this discussion. <laughs> um, it seemed like it would save a lot of money. Um, the ramp you'd, you'd lose the cost of the ramp, but you'd have to add the cost of an elevator or some other handicapped access way to get in there, unless we can come up with some cool creative solutions, which. Might happen. Yeah. Well, you've got your Was hand there up. going to be an elevator? Was there going to be an elevator in the new building? Yes, uh, yes, there is. There is a an elevator, but uh, and you know, if, to to uh, it's something we can look at, but to to shift things around and move that elevator so it could serve the outside would would uh, change things fairly considerably. Um, oh. You know, if if we're looking at it in terms of just adding a, a an, an outside elevator to get up a half flight, um, that would probably add money to the project because the cost of the elevator would probably outweigh the cost of that of that ramp pretty, pretty significantly, um, and it would be an ongoing cost. It would be another elevator that you would have to maintain for perpetuity, but. Uh, it's something we can certainly look at and look at the options for that. And I agree, it's trying to do that before the uh, special town meeting is, is probably premature and, you know, getting us away from the, the real target here, which is to get the yes votes and get it passed. Hey, Eric, um, I'm being out of line myself and talking about design. Could you think about putting an outside door on the existing elevator that faces the church parking lot. So it'd be sort of half a flight up. Um, and that's where our handicapped parking spots are anyway, so it might be useful. And it, don't think about it now. <laughs> I just wanted to toss out that idea. And I apologize to everybody else for that, that extra time. Um, Bill. Yeah, as I, said, as I said earlier, all of these things, we want to be respectful to the public but say, thank you very much. And these are under our value in engineering. We have looked at a preliminary. It takes more than time that we can get to you right now. Just be respectful. And I know that Pagano was doing that. So they can make that statement and we're all clear. Thank you. Maureen, did we happen to get um, the financial information from the town about past product projects? Is that available? Not yet. Okay. Any other thoughts or comments? Questions? Yeah, I just have one. Uh, Maureen, if 
if uh, this is going on a sort of the schedule you're talking about, then uh, we'll be in touch about probably vis revisiting AFC, I think, to share any new information or insight. I mean, there's stuff like that parking information now and things like that that we didn't have before, which I think would be valuable. Okay. Oui? Yeah, I, th I think that having, it's not, it wouldn't be a terrible handicap if you had to enter the building to get into the elevator. Now, right now you can enter it from Parkman Street. With our new design, if we didn't have the ramp, would you still be able to enter from Parkman Street and walk straight into the new elevator inside if we decided to do that? I think we need to wait and ask out, let LPA answer that question. Please. I think we should wait until another day. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, like I said, I apologize for even throwing that idea out there, but I couldn't, couldn't resist myself. Um, Bob, you've got your hand up. I just wanted to make a statement about something that is kind of unrelated to the actual design of the building that we're talking about now. So I'll, I'll wait until later, but before the meeting adjourns, I just wanted to say something. Okay. I, I, had, I had one other question, Rain. Have we, do you know if the discussions with the Congregational Church have come to any resolution? So we had another meeting scheduled for the end of last week, but we postponed that. Um, just until the outcome of the the special town meeting. Okay. So there's nothing new at this point. Okay. Do you have any feel for whether the congregational church is happy or unhappy in general? I know some members are not happy, but um, my sense is that um, they're not throwing a party. They're not yeah, ecstatic, okay. um, but they are not angry. Okay. Um, there's just a lot, there's a lot of little details that we need to work out. Okay. Yeah. Until we, there is a solid answer one way or the other, I don't think we can expect them to be happy. So. Right. If we can get them away from angry. That's a, that's a plus. <laughs> okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Do we have any idea who the guests are? With just telephone numbers? Yeah, we um, went through that. <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, it's um. Yeah, come, come. Uh, it's, it's Brian. It's, it's Brian from Vertex and Jim Holmes from the uh, library the trustees, trustees. Library trustees. Oh great! Yeah. Oh hi, yeah, Jim. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? Oh, I, I will say one thing that of interest. I forgot to mention this from the the planning the. Public Library Grant Meeting. Uh, Mr. Schaefer was on that call with me also, and had some questions about how it's going to work. So, um, okay, um, but, uh, Bob, you had a, a comment you wanted to bring up later in. Yeah, sure. I I just wanted to go on record as opposing any discussion as to uh, trying to reduce the fee of the designer as a way to value engineer out the costs. And that extends also to the OPM and to the CM. This was suggested by a well-meaning citizen who sent us all an email about this. And I'm not sure if that email was a public record, but um, there, are strict, there are strict state mandates on how to the design, the OPM and the CM services are procured. And we should note that I don't think we should be discussing uh, how to circumvent those mandates in order to reduce costs, especially on the back of the designer who's doing such a great job. And I just wanted to state that the costs uh, for the design, the OPM and the CM services are fees for professional services. They are not a commodity that are uh, to be negotiated like you would negotiate a package deal for steel or for roofing shingles. These are fees for professional services by folks that are doing a great job who are procured under state law. So I don't think we should be even entertaining any discussion about that in, in value engineering out costs as that citizen uh, suggested. So I just wanna go on record as that I'm staying away from <laughs> any discussion on that. Mm. I agree 100% Bob. And yeah. the yeah. resident who reached out to us has reached out to me multiple times and I've explained all of these things to them in many different ways and they're just 
not hearing it or not choosing to hear it. And um, I agree with you completely. Naive. The question could come up on the town floor, though, again, from that person or somebody else. So I think we should have the answer pretty much as Bob explained it. Uh, I, I was going to actually ask if Bob would be willing to stand to address that question should it come yeah. up on the floor. I'll be happy to. In fact, I just spent uh, last evening going through the Inspector General has a, on their website. It's, it's a compendium on state bidding laws and procedures. It's 210 pages of which uh, at least 150 pages are designed or are talk about the procurement of the designer, the OPM and the CM and how public vertical building under chapter 149 is procured. The other, there's another 75 pages on how chapter 30 or horizontal or road and bridge work is procured. And then there's another like 50 to 60 pages on the new CM at risk process, uh, 149A. That explains everything in strict detail. So um, perhaps people are well-meaning, but they don't understand public construction is different from private negotiated work. You know, it, it's just different and it's, we have to follow those rules and that's what it is. And the other part too, I was re realizing that every project has an affirmative marketing action, which means you have to reach out to MBE, WBE businesses to incorporate that. That could add on costs. And I think the state understood that when we came up with this in order to have more inclusivity and to build up smaller businesses, but that comes at an added cost as well. I'll be glad um, to address that if that comes up. Maureen, does the FAQ have anything about CM at risk or anything sort of in that arena? Not at the moment, no. Um, I'm thinking we may want to add a question, why did we choose CM at risk? And it, as part of the answer to that question, we have a link to the web page that Bob just, Bob just mentioned about. And that way... Uh, I can give you the link on that, but... When you were you want me to come up with a few sentences on why CM at risk, I'll be happy. That'd be great. Thank you, yeah, Bob. I mean, if you could just put in that the topic, and then we'll leave it to you to to answer it, Bob. Okay. Uh, Bill. Yeah, Fred Lonato just called, and he's he is in agreement to make a statement on what triggers ADA and all the other uh, requirements when you get into modifying a building. I told oh, him not answer any questions. That would be up to our architect and construction team to answer that. He's agreed to do that. So. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, we may actually have a short meeting today. Um, <laughs> would anyone like to, when should we schedule our next meeting? I think we should probably have a weekly for a while. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Um, Maureen. Thank you for sending me an email. Today's my birthday, and I completely. Happy oh, birthday, Lee! Thank you. I completely, oh, I completely. For, you can see I'm like doing stuff, and I just totally forgot. So thanks for reminding me. Well, I think we're all voting for you to be the birthday person of the day. <laughs> Thank <don't>, you. <laughs> we're voting our good wishes. <laughs> can I have a motion for that? <laughs> so moved. Indeed. Thank you. Um, okay. do the next, are we going to do the next um, two, three thirty on every Tuesday for the next? Let's let's week? plan for that, at least until the the special town meeting occurs. The one thing is, um, let's see, Maureen, I think you said the select board was planning to meet late this week. Next week, early next okay. week, probably, um, probably Tuesday, the fifteenth. So that would be almost simultaneously simultaneous with us. They usually start at six, I think, I believe. Or six thirty. Okay. Yeah. Six would or there six be 30. any would the, there be any value to having our meeting after the select board meeting? Hmm. I, I don't offhand see what there would be, but I just wanted to ask that question. Depends on what they say. Yeah. yeah or what true. the date is, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it could be like not till nine o'clock. I mean, who knows? I, I wasn't uh, thinking I think after this that meeting Tuesday, is, that be... I think this is meetings only for this purpose. So I don't think it'll oh, go okay. very long. All right. Okay. They're regular meetings on the 
22nd, I think. Uh, but after could be on Wednesday, too, if we think it would be useful. But, um, our, Maureen, would you anticipate needing to present anything at no. the select board meeting? Okay, yeah, no, I didn't I think so. But I asked that question, and they don't expect a presentation. Okay. Um, I think we can just stick with the Tuesday afternoon meetings and just to not mess up anybody's schedule any more than it already is. Okay, so next meeting Tuesday at 3.30 on Zoom, and Maureen, you'll send out the agenda and all? I will. Okay, and please take a look at the fact that Maureen will send out and add your comments to it. Anything else? Move to adjourn. I have a second. second. All in favor, Maureen? Amy Ott, yes. Ed Baldwin, yes. Al? Gordon, yes. Bob? Uh, Petrocella, yes. Walter? Leslie, yes. Lee? Emery, yes. Mary? Johnston, yes. Bill? One and yes. And I said to myself, okay, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.